My name is Elena Valdez, and I'm a librarian at the Santa Fe Public Library. Today I'll be sharing with you a short presentation about Cleofas Martinez Aramillo, a writer and folklorist who has remained relatively unknown to the general public when it comes to New Mexico history. While there is much to say about Cleofas Aramillo, this presentation will focus on Jaramillo's legacy as a cultural worker in Santa Fe. Jaramillo organized the Sociedad Folklorica at a time when women in general were not encouraged to write or to take on leadership roles. The proper place for a woman, many thought, was in the home, where she could occupy a silent, subdued position beside her husband. Even Jaramillo voices this notion in her own written works, though, through her actions, she questioned, if not contradicted it, in many ways. Most notably, perhaps, with her creation of La Sociedad Folklorica, a women's group which became dedicated to the preservation of local customs, language, and history. Cleofas Jaramillo was born in 1878 to a wealthy land-owning family in Arroyo Hondo, a little village outside of Taos in northern New Mexico. When Jaramillo was growing up, she attended the Loreto Convent School in Taos and then the Loreto Academy in Santa Fe. In 1898, Jaramillo, then Cleofas Martinez, married Venceslao Jaramillo, a prominent New Mexican politician, and the couple had a daughter named Angelina. Jaramillo's life was marked by tragedy. In 1920, just four years after their daughter was born, Venceslao passed away. And then, years later, in 1931, Jaramillo's daughter Angelina was murdered at their Santa Fe home. Jaramillo reflects on these moments in her life and others in her two memoirs, or autoethnographies, Shadows of the Past, Sombras del Pasado, published in 1941, and Romance of a Little Village Girl, which was published in 1955. She also compiled a collection of Spanish language tales titled Cuentos del Hogar, Spanish Fairy Stories, and wrote a cookbook titled The Genuine Tasty New Mexican Recipes, Potajes Sabrosos, which were both published in 1939. Romance of a Little Village Girl, Jaramillo describes her personal life as a wealthy Hispanic woman living in northern New Mexico with great detail, but also describes the broader social and political changes happening around her. Much of the memoir is concerned with the ways in which the northern New Mexico of the early 20th century to mid 20th century hardly resembled the New Mexico Jaramillo knew in her youth. Some of these changes were related to the influx of newcomers from the eastern United States and their attitudes of Anglo-American superiority. A great deal of the content in Romance of a Little Village Girl attempts to address what Jaramillo and other Hispanic New Mexican writers of her generation felt were demeaning representations of local Hispanic history and culture. Mainstream English language literature published between the late 19th and early 20th century largely depicted New Mexico and the greater Southwest as, on one hand, a haven far removed from the horrors of civilization and modernization, and, at the same time, a barbaric place in need of American progress. Late 19th century author Charles Loomis was among the most well-known writers to paint New Mexico in this way. He wrote in his travelogue, The Land of Poco Tiempo, that New Mexico was a land of quaint, swart faces, of oriental dress and unspelled speech. In speaking about the practices of the Northern New Mexico Religious Brotherhood, known as the Penitentes, too, Loomis described New Mexico as a place where Christians mangle and crucify themselves, 
the heart of Africa beating against the Rockies. These perceptions, forwarded by Loomis and others, became part of an official archive that would shape how people thought of New Mexico for more than a century. Later, in the 1920s and 1930s, many writers with which you may be familiar, writers like Mary Austin, Ruth Laughlin Barker, and Erna Ferguson, for instance, used similar tropes and language to describe New Mexico. These are the kinds of attitudes that Jaramillo was invested in addressing when she wrote her own cookbook and memoirs, as well as when she organized La Sociedad Folklorica. Now, in focusing on Jaramillo and her creation of La Sociedad Folklorica, I do not mean to ignore the darker aspects of Jaramillo's legacy or the ways in which she promoted European superiority. She definitely did not divest herself from the privileges of being an upper-class Hispanic woman. Yet her writings and legacy still offer us useful ways of thinking about the evolution of regional Hispanic culture, women's history, and the manner in which things like race, class, and gender impact how history is told and who tells it. Significantly, Jaramillo's writings really highlight the capacity of women to take action as cultural workers and alter dominant narratives. In Romance of a Little Village Girl, Jaramillo wrote that she got the idea to mobilize local Hispanic women and change perceptions about her community after reading Holland's Magazine, a woman's magazine of the South. Inspired by an article about a Natchez pilgrimage wherein antebellum mansions and rich heirlooms of the southern United States were displayed for the public, to commemorate phases of the region's history, Jaramillo devised her own plan to curate her community's Spanish colonial heritage and transform a popular festival that had been dominated by Anglo-Americans into what she thought, in her words, it ought to be. This festival was none other than the Santa Fe Fiesta. Then it was an annual event largely constructed by Anglo-American anthropologists to commemorate the Spanish reconquest of Santa Fe and the ways in which New Mexico had been saved by Anglo-American modernity. At that time, public performances that took place during the fiesta reinforced the notion that people of Hispanic, Mexican, and Native descent were primitive and in need of civilization, very much like Loomis's Land of Poco Tiempo. While local Hispanic people took part in the religious commemoration of the founding of the city of Santa Fe, they hardly participated in other fiesta activities during the early 20th century. The magazine article prompted Jaramillo to encourage other upper-class Hispanic women to look in their mother's trunks for clothing that would communicate their own sense of belonging in Santa Fe. The logic here was, essentially, that if the women could better tie themselves to the region's past and reframe themselves in that past in a more sophisticated way, they would change how others viewed them in the present. The plan Jaramillo says she developed would require the help of other women. She discusses her vision of the new fiesta program in Romance of a Little Village Girl, stating, In those years, I had become accustomed to only a few hours of sleep. During the hours I lay awake that night, I planned a program for the coming fiesta just two months ahead. The following morning, full of enthusiasm, I called five ladies who I thought would be interested in helping to carry out my plans. Inviting them to tea, I told them I had something interesting to propose. This must have aroused their curiosity as the five ladies came. I told them my plan, which was to try to arouse more interest amongst our Spanish-speaking population in taking part in the fiesta in greater numbers and that each of us six invite ten more to join us in the procession to the church, wearing old-fashioned gowns in the procession of the cross wearing shawls, that we should enter the parade on horseback as Las Galleras de Santa Ana and to serve a Spanish barbecued supper. While it sounded like a large undertaking, nevertheless, the ladies liked it. 
This first intervention in the fiesta ultimately leads to the formation of her folklore society and the annual Sociedad Folklorica fashion show. Jaramillo, in her words, searched the city and wrote to relatives and friends in other towns to recover gowns that, at least for her, communicated the grandeur of New Mexico's past and the place of upper-class Hispanic women in it. To her satisfaction, she was able to locate gowns for her fashion show, many of which, she says in Romance of a Little Village Girl, were free from damage by moths and splits, all ready to leap out of old trunks from the past to the present and have their wrinkles shaken out into the air. Importantly, Jaramillo's activities ended up producing a different kind of archive that allowed Hispanic people in Santa Fe to express their own sense of belonging in the public sphere. These details in Romance of a Little Village Girl reveal how the production of a largely imagined Spanish past required the conscious collaboration of local women to change what they really felt were unfair representations of their community. In an interesting way, this moment, the creation of La Sociedad Folklorica, exposes the kinds of methods people engage in to make tradition or reformulate collective identity, seemingly stable things that we think never change but actually do. Mm -hmm.